going to continue our studies on macrobiotic history and the focus will be on history of modern macrobiotics, <clears throat> particularly George Osawa and Micho and Aveline Cushy. But leading up to this, I'd like to talk a little bit more about some of their predecessors. You may recall that in our first class together, we looked at the derivation of the word macrobiotics and the concept that originated with Hippocrates, father of medicine in ancient Greece. And then we looked at the Yellow Emperor's Classic and the Far Eastern uh, tradition of macrobiotics coming out of China. And then we looked at a little bit of the macrobiotic tradition in the Bible in the Middle East, the story from the book of Daniel. Do you remember that? Okay. So today we're going to <coughs> fast forward from uh, ancient Babylon where we left off. Let's move forward to at least a, a thousand uh, years later to the uh, <coughs> period of the Enlightenment in Europe in the 1700s. And there was, as the name we give that era, the Enlightenment, there was a kind of golden age, a resurrection of interest in diet and health. And interestingly, it was introduced under the name of macrobiotics. And the primary figure was a medical doctor in Germany. by the name of Christoph von Hofland. And <clears throat> Dr. Uh, Hofland had a modern medical education for his era, which means he had basic kind of courses in chemistry and kind of incipient biology and this was the era of Newton and Newtonian physics so Western culture and civilization was moving toward what we call modernity toward more analytic view of life so that the old Hippocratic teachings had fallen into disfavor and as you recall these emphasized more qualitative types of observations and conclusions. The Hippocratic worldview was based on the four elements which find their correspondence in the five elements or phases in China and the Far East. And the four elements gave rise to the four humors and the humors uh, gave rise to what we call humoral medicine. So that up until this time, for about a thousand or fifteen hundred years since Hippocrates, doctors in the West looked at disease primarily as an imbalance in the humors, in the sanguine, the choleric, the phlegmatic, or the melancholic humor. And the humors in turn arose from basically an imbalance in diet or environment. So it was a very macrobiotic view that prevailed more or less uh, in Europe as elsewhere around the world in traditional society. But this changed then with the coming of modern times with the Renaissance with Newton and Galileo and now the art of measurement prevailed and kind of these incipient nutritional theories uh, were just coming into uh, practice. So Dr. Uh, Hoofland, who grew up in, I believe it was Prussia at this time, had a modern medical education, but he went against the tide, and he was still convinced that the old Hippocratic approach was essentially valid. 
And so he began his own study, personal study, not only with his patients, but he went traveling around Central Europe. And his quest was for long-lived people. And you may recall that the word macrobiotic means uh, longevity or long life. So he particularly went in search of people who lived to be a hundred years or more. Uh, most of them, many of them were farmers or people living in the countryside. And he would ask them, what is the secret of your uh, longevity or your good health? And from the basis of all of his own fieldwork study, he wrote a famous book called Macrobiotic. I guess that was the German spelling. Uh, or the art of prolonging life. The art of prolonging life. And this was in 1796. And it proved extremely popular. In fact, it was then translated in many languages, including English, within several years. And in this book, he, he has a... Uh, kind of a mixture of his own personal fieldwork experience as well as then his own interpretation of modern uh, scientific approach to diet and health. And interestingly, he was, I believe, the first person, for example, to look at the comparative uh, anatomy of animals and human beings. And he came to the view that based on his, the measurements, for example, of the length of the intestines in animals, they often have either very short intestines, like lions and tigers. And he said those short intestines were more appropriate for carnivorous beasts, such as uh, those big cats, whose main food is, is meat. Whereas most vegetarian animals have very long intestines, like cows, like sheep, many like this. And he found that on the basis of human intestines, they weren't quite as long as the sheep or the cattle, but they were much longer than those of the carnivorous animals, like wolves and again tigers and lions. So his conclusion was that the human digestive tract was more appropriate for digesting predominantly plant quality food. Same thing, he looked at the teeth and said that human beings, <coughs> our teeth are primar have primarily molars, which are suitable for grinding grain. Also, we have incisors, which are for tearing vegetables, but we have only four canine teeth, which are for <coughs> a tearing animal quality food. So that, again, the <coughs> something like seven-eighths of our food should be more plant quality food based on uh, the anatomy of our teeth. So these are really basic uh, concepts that later went into macrobiotic teachings into the 20th and now 21st century. Uh, Dr. Hooflin also placed great emphasis on uh, diet, or excuse me, on health and uh, I mean, on exercise and physical activity. He was uh, extremely um, recommended, for example, horseback riding, which, of course, that was the main pe way people got around in that era. Uh, but anyway, he recommended that for general good health. Um, also, interestingly, he went against the kind of the trend of his era where um, uh, bottled milk was just being introduced for babies. It's very interesting that up until this time, of course, nursing uh, on the part of the mother was a traditional way of, of feeding the infant through breastfeeding. But now, uh, in the Renaissance, new theories emerged that breast milk uh, was not as nutritionally superior as as cow's milk and other animal type of milk. So, particularly in urban areas, mothers were now beginning to give their children uh, 
cow's milk and sometimes milk from other animals. Dr. Hooflin said this was a very dangerous trend and he recommended that all mothers go back to breastfeeding their infants. So there are many teachings like this that he introduced and again his dietary approach was not 100% vegetarian or vegan but it was predominantly plant-based. Again something like 75-85% grains, beans, vegetables. So this was a very traditional macrobiotic uh, <coughs> approach.